please welcome Dr. Ali Benazir. Good evening. My talk is entitled, Awaken Your Inner Creative Genius. And I'm here to provide you with a few simple and highly effective tools to boost your creativity in the space of the 17 minutes and 30 seconds I have left. Uh, so, in order to do this, we're going to have a little fun. Underneath your chairs, please find pen and paper, unless you already have the, uh, the index cards on you. We're going to do a little test. I'm going to give you the name of an object. You have 90 seconds to write down as many uses as you can think of for this object as possible. Now, these could be normal uses, they could be outlandish, crazy uses, it doesn't matter. Just get the idea down, okay? So you have 90 seconds, jot down as many possible uses for the item as you can think of. Everybody have a pen? House lights yes, actually, could we have the house lights up all the way? So I can see your lovely mugs. Fantastic. All right, can you see your paper? You have pen? Are you ready? Yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Are you ready? Yes. Fantastic. All right. The object is a brick. Go. 90 seconds. As fast as you can move your hand across the paper. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. What do you have down? Whatever you have down right now is fine. And what I'd like you to do is to score your test. Just count the number of items you came up with. Doesn't matter how crazy they are, just write them down. And have that score ready, because what we're going to do is we're going to take the test again at the end of the talk. And you're going to compare the results of that test to this one and notice how much you improve your creative output. OK? Yes. All right, so part of my work here today is to prove to you that you are all already creative geniuses, OK? And the reason is very simple. All of you went to bed last night. All of you slept. And as you slept, you dreamt. And in your dreams, you had these fantastical tapestries of visions and sights and, and smells that you smelled and tastes that you experienced and sensations that went through your body. And these are just incredibly detailed and quite inventive. And they happen all the time. And it did not come from outer space. It came from inside your head. So there is some magnificent creative faculty already indwelling inside that cranium of yours. So it's merely a matter of bringing that out in broad daylight, harnessing it towards something that you want to accomplish, say, solve problems, which most of you do during the course of a day. So let's see what we got here. So um, there are many ways of boosting creativity. And uh, there is the way preferred by the world record hoarder, holder for the number of patents. That would be uh, Dr. Yoshiro Nakamatsu of Japan. He has 3,200 plus patents in his name. And his method's really quite simple, the oldest trick in the book. He uh, puts on his bathing suit, goes to his swimming pool, um, holds his breath, goes underwater, and scribbles like mad on a plexiglass tablet. <laughs> Not making this up, OK? That's just, that's way too simple. I mean, come on. Uh, anyway, you come up with that. So something perhaps a little more practical that all of you can use, I'm going to present to you today. So I'm going to give you three ideas. One is to basically um, have the instruments of capturing your own native creativity. The second is to generate more ideas uh, through various suggestions I'm going to give you. And uh, the third is to kind of put yourself in an optimized creative state, OK? So let's see what we got here. So the idea is that you're, you, when you sleep, you have these fantastical dreams. And these, vision, these are uh, dream paintings by Carl Jung. They are in his new book, new book, The Red Book. The book has been, has been suppressed for the past 80 years by the Jung family. But now, finally, they have been uh, set free and allowed to come out into the world uh, for you to benefit from and also release your creative faculties. Okay? And um, what I want you to think about is, um, first of all, modeling excellence. Okay? So the idea is that in order to accomplish something, 
One easy way of doing that is to put yourself in the state of mind of somebody who already is very good at that, okay? So you guys may have seen um, t-shirts to that effect. I prefer the t-shirt that says, what would Leonardo do, right? Because to me, Leonardo exemplifies incredible creativity across all these different disciplines, right? So say, you know, you imagine that you're looking through the eyes of Leonardo, right? So you take you, right? And you imagine Leonardo's head suddenly transplanted onto your head, right? And it looks something like that. And then you can look through the eyes of Leonardo and imagine, okay, wow, that's a very interesting world that I'm looking at. And perhaps take on some of those um, behaviors. Okay, so that's modeling. Um, and the thing is, in your sleep, uh, you become tremendously creative. And as I, uh, I showed you those dream images, from, uh, from Jung, and these are all things that he came up with as he was asleep, and he jotted them down afterwards. There's also the, air, um, the region right before you fall asleep, and the time uh, right as you're waking up when you're kind of groggy. And uh, those are called uh, the hypnagogic state and the hypnopompic state. And you tend to hallucinate in those states. These are good hallucinations, okay? And you're very inventive in those states, so why not capture the value of those states as well, okay? And what I encourage you to do is to always have some kind of mechanism of capture uh, for your native creative states. So uh, great things that have come out of the hypnagogic and hypnopompic states are, for example, the structure of benzene. August Kekulé, legend goes that he was in a hypnagogic state when he came up with that. Also, uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, when he was 19 years old, apparently he came up with the uh, theorem for constructing a 17-sided si regular polygon as he was in his hypnagogic state. So what you want to have is a pad of paper and a pen right by your bed, and that way when you wake up in the morning you can record your dreams. You can also write down your ideas, hypnagogic state and hypnopompic state. You also want to have some kind of tape recorder. Legend has it that um, the tune for uh, the monster hit Satisfaction came to Keith Richards in his sleep. He had a tape recorder rolling, and as he was mumbling that in his sleep, he woke up in the morning, he's like, that sounds pretty darn good, I'm gonna use that. And so you have so that came, out, came to him in his sleep. So do not underestimate the, value, the power of your, uh, your sleep time ideas. And um, so that's capturing. So that's just the low hanging fruit, and the idea is that you want to be able to uh, take, make use of the stuff that you're already, your brain's already doing, okay? Now I want to talk also about generating new ideas. So latent inhibition. Right now as you're sitting there, you have billions of bits of information coming at you from the world surrounding you, right? You have your five senses, and your brain has to make sense of that. And the way it does that is by filtering out a lot of useless information. And so what actually reaches your consciousness is what's really useful to you. And that's good, because otherwise, you go crazy. At the same time, it's been shown that people who have low latent inhibition, which means that people who allow more stimulus to come through them and reach their consciousness, they tend to be much more creative. There is a dark side to that as well, which is that people who have really low latent inhibition, they tend to be a little crazy. And there is a relationship between craziness and, and creativity. And people like Vincent van Gogh and Salvador Dali and Buckminster Fuller, they were slightly on the nutty side of things. So if you would like to become floridly schizophrenic in order to become more creative, be my guest. But you don't have to go that far. You can just put yourself in a more creative state. There are physiological states in which you are more capable of doing things. And so why not emulate those in order to be able to do those things that you want to do. For example, be more creative, okay? And the state of creativity that uh, I've found works for a lot of people is the confluence of repose and activity, of being super energized in the mind while being very relaxed in the body. And this mirrors a cosmic principle of creation, which is the union of the masculine and the feminine as exemplified by the yin yang or tai chi to a symbol. So you have activity in the mind, repose in the body, they come together, and you get monstrous creativity. So what we're going to do now is we're going to combine everything that I just mentioned, okay? We're going to put you in an optimally creative state, combining repose of the body and activity of the mind. 
And we are going to also allow you to emulate your personal creative hero, whoever that is. Could be Leonardo, could be Mozart, could be anybody. And after we do that, we're going to change the gating of your brain as well to allow more stimulus in. And then use a simple tool of capture, namely the index card you have, and a pen to retake the test that we just took. And notice how much you improve. OK? So are you guys ready? Yeah. OK, good. So the state that, is, that very much mimics this, uh, what, we, what we just discussed is a hypnotic state, a trance state. So I'm going to do a little quick hypnotic induction. And what you have to realize is that the state of dreaming is, is exactly what I just described. Your body is effectively paralyzed while your brain is going completely bonkers. If you put an EEG on somebody who's dreaming, the EEG is way off the scale. Okay, so we're going to mimic that right here in, well, sort of broad daylight. Uh, so I invite you to take a deep breath and close your eyes. Make yourself nice and comfortable. Uncross your legs. Settle into your seats. And with each deep breath that you take in, allow positive energy and relaxation to move through your body. And with each deep exhalation, allow any remaining tension or discomfort to just flow out of your body. Come from the relaxation in, any remaining discomfort or tension out. And as you do that, you can imagine a wave of relaxation moving on down your body from the top of your head. It's like a warm ocean wave starting with your scalp, moving on down to the muscles of your neck and face. And with each part of your body that this wave touches, that part can just let go and relax completely. As you keep on doing that, just move on down to the muscles of your shoulders and neck, upper torso, lower torso, the muscles of your buttocks and legs. Just let go completely all the way down to the very tips of your toes. And as you do that, just allow that wave to wash over you completely, as if you're completely engulfed in this wave of relaxation. And in this state of deep relaxation, it's very easy to visualize your creative hero. And notice what this person looks like. The particular way this person walks, the way this person talks, and most important, the way this person feels on the inside. And the way you can feel this person think as well. And continue to do that. And as you do that, just imagine the head of that person, just like the head of Leonardo just showed you, to just float up into the air and come straight down onto your head. So you're looking out through his eyes or her eyes and looking at the world, witnessing it as if you are that creative person. And maybe even feel a rush of ideas coming through you. As you become aware of the sensation of your feet on the ground and your buttocks on the chair, your back on the chair, the particular temperature of the room can now come to your attention. Also, the particular taste in your mouth and the smell of your environment. As you continue to do that, just allow all of that to become a flood of creativity and ideas just coursing through your body. That's just itching now to come into your fingertips. And when it comes into your fingertips, it wants to just spill onto that sheet of paper you have and just make you write ideas down like crazy. And as you do that, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes, ready for that flood to come through your fingertips. One, two, and three. Open your eyes. We're going to take that test again. You have 90 seconds to come up with as many uses for a different object this time. 90 seconds to come up with as many uses as you can think of for a paper clip.
Go. Keep your hands moving. Just keep on writing. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. And quickly score your test again. Just count the number of items you had. And this time we're going to cheat a little bit. But before we do, how many in the room improve their score? Of all the people, OK. How many people had the same score? And how many went down? OK, all right, pretty good. Now we're going to cheat a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a list of random words. You're allowed to use these random words as a springboard to come up with more ideas for you. This is just another technique, really simple. I just pulled 15 words out of the dictionary. You can do this too. And here is the list of words. Go, you have 30 more seconds. These are totally random words I pull from the dictionary. And you just look at them, and if it comes up with another idea for use for a paper clip, you are allowed to write it down. For some reason, everybody has an idea when they see blemish. Yeah. <laughs> and most people run out of ideas before they run out of time. So 30 more seconds would not have made that much of a difference. But this does make a difference. Five more seconds. And time. All right, now how many people had a lower score? OK, three people. How many people had the same score as before? And how many people improved their score? The rest of the room. Fantastic. So uh, when I do this with other groups, on average, people improve their score 33% just from the talk and the transinduction, and as much as 88% with the use of the random word technique. These are techniques that are available to you at all times. and um, I hypnotize you which, for what you thought was five minutes, but actually during the entire talk, I was giving you embedded hypnotic commands to be more open, be more creative, let yourself free, all these things. So all this converged to allow you to become more creative now. Thank you very much.